I'm a historian of science and technology. I live in Altadena, California. My day job is, is as the historian for the NASA Jet Propulsion Lab, which is operated by the California Institute of Technology. Um, I'm not here on their behalf, though. I also have a side interest in writing about history of climate change. I scuba dive. I ski a lot. Um, well, let's see, I used to bicycle, but I haven't had a chance in a long time now. Um, I, guess, I guess that's kind of it. Oh my, I have, I have done lots of different things. My dissertation work was uh, history of aircraft landing age development, um, which wound up uh, getting me a contract history job for NASA. I wrote a history of atmospheric science for them, a history of supersonic transportation for them. Um, and uh, then engaged in uh, the Merchants of Doubt effort that, that brought me out here. Um, I've now got a history of Mars exploration coming out next week, um, and who knows what I'll do next. I have lots of interests. Um, Naomi and I met at a meeting in, uh, in Germany, a uh, history of meteorology meeting um, in 2004 during the summer. She was working on uh, J. Gordon MacDonald, who is an interesting geophysicist. He was an early adopter of anthropogenic climate change, but one of the very last rejectors of plate tectonics. Um, that's what she was doing, and I was uh, doing history of meteorology work in, in pursuit of this history of atmospheric science I, I mentioned earlier. Um, and later that summer, she started doing the work, unknown to me, uh, that became her, her, 2000, her December 2004 paper in science on how, this, th how there's this almost universal consensus among scientists about climate change. Um, and then she came under kind of a vicious attack from an organized lobby. And uh, I called her up one day and said, how could you not know that would happen? And, um, she was very naive about that. And kind of started a long conversation about that organized effort um, that I had discovered in my atmospheric science history research, um, but really had no plans to do anything with. Um, and she didn't really either. She was trying to do, finish some other work. Um, and then probably 2006, I forget the times now, she discovered that the same folks who had been involved in kind of organizing climate change denial in the United States had also been involved in the tobacco lobby, um, involved in the Tobacco Institute specifically, which handed out money to researchers in the United States who would do science that raised questions about whether tobacco smoke was harmful. Um, and then we knew we had a story uh, to tell. So Merchants of Doubt, uh, as we worked through it, uh, is, is history of really the, the work of four American physicists, all very highly placed um, in their lifetimes within the scientific establishment of the country. Um, and they involved themselves in um, tobacco lobbying and lobbying for the Strategic Defense Initiative uh, in the Reagan administration, um, in lobbying against acid rain mitigation, and then finally against the idea that, that an climate change was anthropogenic. Um, and our argument was that they became involved with this not for the money, and that's really important. They weren't doing it to get rich. They were doing it because they were believers in, in free market capitalism, uh, market fundamentalists we call them, um, and couldn't accept that regulation of business was necessary because of these environmental and health problems. Um, and so they chose to reject the scientific findings, the findings of their own colleagues, rather than, than accept that business should be regulated by the government and, 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 caused not and, and, and forced to fix these harms. Um, so those were our findings. Uh, within the United States, the denial industry has been quite effective. Um, with waxing and waning effectiveness, um, I want to say, because the majority of the American public is actually convinced that climate change is happening but not quite a majority, and, and it's this, this varies a bit, not quite a majority except that it's anthropogenic. Um, and there is um, a community 
that again varies between about 20 and 35 percent who reject that it's happened and happening at all. Um, so the effectiveness of the, the denial lobby has been to ensure people remain confused about causation, and causation is the key issue. If climate change were natural, no one would care about doing anything about it. But once it becomes anthropogenic, then it has all sorts of implications, regulatory implications, economic implications, ethical implications, and so on. Um, and that is what our, our actors most wished to create doubt about.